Hey, Wagwan, it's Mr. Gartrid here, and we're going to be doing a Cape Pure Mathematics Unit 1 question, all right, from Module 1, that's Basic Algebra and Functions, all right, and a student actually requested this video, okay, I'm going to be doing a May-June 2018 past paper question on logarithmic equations, okay, so we have the question here which says, solve the logarithmic equation log 2x plus 2 to the base 4 minus log of x plus 1 to the base 2 equals 1 all right so let us do the solution okay now let's look at this here you recognize that for the first logarithm, the base is a four, right? The base is four there. And for the second log, the base is two there, right? What does that tell you? We're dealing with logarithms of different bases, right? So in order to subtract the logs, right? In order to apply my rule, it means that I need the logarithms to be of the same base. Okay, so this involves the change of base formula. Okay, so let me just write a note here so that you remember the formula. The formula says, if I want the logarithm, right? If I want the logarithm, base A of B, then that is going to be equal to That will be equal to the logarithm of the base k, right? Log to the base k of b, right? Divided by log to the base k of a, where k is the new base, all right? So k just represents the new base, okay? So I'm now going to use this formula to change log base 4 of 2x plus 2, right? I'm going to use that formula, use the formula to change that logarithm to the base 2, okay? Let me just scroll down a bit here. I now want log base 4 of 2x plus 2, all right? So following the formula now, Following the formula, in the numerator, I'm going to have log to the base 2, right? K is the new base, which is 2 in this case, of B. B in this case would represent the 2x plus 2, all right? Divided by the log base 2 of A. A in this case is the base of my logarithm here, which is a positive 4, okay? Positive 4, good. So let's just now simplify this log, all right? So this is now going to be equal to, in the numerator, I'm still going to have log to the base two of two x plus two, but in the denominator, I notice that I'm gonna have log to the base two of four, which can be written as two squared. Right, four can be written as two squared. Okay, and this is now going to be equal to, in the numerator, I have log base two of two x plus two. Now in the denominator, this four here, two, right, I can carry down in front of the log as a coefficient. So I'm gonna have two log base two of two. All right, so let me just scroll down a bit here. Yes, that is what I have. I can do that because there's a rule which says if I have the logarithm, right, log to a base k of a to the power of n, that can be written as n log to the base k of a, right? Where k must be greater than one. The base must be greater than one for it to be a logarithm, right? Good. So, that is the rule that I just applied here, all right? 
Now there's also another rule in logs which say if I have the log to the base A, right, of A, that is going to be equal to one, meaning that the argument at the base of the log is the same thing, right, the same number, then I can just write it as one, okay? So this is now going to be equal to, let me draw my line here, that's now going to be equal to, in the numerator, I still have log to the base two of two x plus two, right? And in the denominator, I can now apply the rule, right? Log base two of two is actually one. So what I really have is two multiplied by one, which is two, all right? So I can now say that the logarithm, right? The log base four of two x plus two is equal to, Log base two of two x plus two divided by two. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do now is to just replace the logarithm, this log here. All right, let me write in a different color. Let me go back up. All right, so I'm going to replace this log here, right, as log base two of two x plus two divided by two. Okay, so let's do that here. So, good. I'm now going to scroll down and I'm now going to have log base two of two x plus two, right? I'm gonna have that divided by two, Okay, minus log of x plus one, all right? We had x plus one there in the question. So x plus one equals one, right? And the base here is two for the log. Okay, good. So now that we have logs of the same base, so we can now apply our rules, great. Now, before I do anything, let me just multiply the entire equation by two to get rid of this denominator here, right? So when I multiply the equation above by two, what I will get is that this two here in the denominator will cancel out, which will give me a logarithm to the base two of two x plus two minus, a two is gonna come here, right? Log base two of x plus one. And remember, we're multiplying the right-hand side by two as well, so we're gonna get two. Okay, good. So that is what I have. Great. Now, I want to subtract these two logarithms, but before I can do that, I need to do something here with the two, right? So I'm going to now use the rule that says, if I have log to the base k of a, Right, and I have a number n in front. I can write it as log to the base k of a to the power of n. Right, so I'm going to carry the, the two up as a power. So what I will now have is log base two of two x plus two minus log base two x plus one all squared. Right, just carry the two up as a power, and that must be equal to two. Right. That must be equal to two. Good. That is what I have. Great. Now I want to subtract the logs. So remember there's a rule now which says if I want to subtract the logarithm, so I have log base k of a minus log base k of b, right? Then that is equal to log base k of a divided by b. All right, so I'm going to divide the arguments of the log. So what I'm going to have now is log base two, right, log, I'm going to have log base two of one. In my numerator, I'm going to have two x plus two divided by x plus one, all squared and that must be equal to two right so i'm just i just divided this here by this here okay good so 
That is what I have. Now, if you look carefully in the numerator, you recognize that two is a common factor, right? So what I can do is factor the two in the numerator there. So what I'm gonna do now is say log base two, factor the two, right? When I factor the two in brackets, I will have x plus one remaining, okay? So we now have two times x plus two divided by x plus one all squared, and that must be equal to two, right? And clearly you can see the reason why I factored out the two, right? Because you recognize that I now have x plus one in the numerator, and I have an x plus one all squared in the denominator. So what will happen is that one of the x plus ones will cancel out, okay? So it will cancel out. So I can now write log, I can now write log to the base two of two in the numerator divided by an x plus one, All right? So I have x plus one in the denominator there now, okay? And that must be equal to two, good, great. Now remember, my aim is to get the value of x, all right? Now to get the value of x, what I'm going to do is to convert this logarithmic equation to an exponential form, right? So I'm going to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form. So just to remind you what that says, right? If I have log base A of B, right? Let's say log base A of B is equal to some number K, all right? Good. So the logarithm base A of B is equal to K if and only if, if and only if A, right, the base raised to what is on the right hand side of the equation, K, right? So A to the power of K is going to be equal to this number here now, right, which is B. Okay, good. So log base A of B is equal to K if and only if A to the power of K is equal to B, all right? So that is the definition that we'll be using in order to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form. Great. So what I'm now saying is that if, I, if I'm going to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form, what I'm going to have now is the base two being raised to what is on the right hand side of the equation. All right, so that's two squared. Let's write it here. Two squared is going to be equal to what? It's going to now be equal to what is inside of the brackets here. All right, that's two divided by x plus one. Let's write that down. So we now have two divided by x plus one. Great. So let me just put my line here to show that we are dividing. Great. So that is what I have. And I know that two squared is four, right? So I can now say that four is going to be equal to two divided by x plus one. Good. So I'm now one step closer to getting my value for x, all right? So what I'm gonna do is just put this over one. So four divided by one is four, of course, right? And I'm now going to cross multiply, okay? I'm now going to cross multiply. And if I do that now, I will get four. Four multiplied by x plus one is equal to two multiplied by one here, which is two, right? That's two multiplied by one, which is two. Excellent. So let, let me now expand the brackets, all right? So that's four multiplied by x, which will give me four x, and four multiplied by one, which will give me a plus four. And that must be equal to two, right? Good. So I'm now going to carry the four here to the right-hand side of the equation. It will become a negative four. So I can now say that four x is now equal to two minus four. 
okay? And we know that two minus four is a negative two, right? Good. And to get the value of x now, I have four multiplied by x. So I need to now divide both sides of the equation by a positive four, right? To get rid of the four. So I can now say that x is equal to a negative two divided by four, okay? And we know that that can be reduced to x is equal to negative a half, right? X is equal to negative a half. Okay, good. Now that is my value for x. But whenever you get your value for x, please do not stop there, okay? Because you need to check the logarithm to see if it satisfies the equation, right? Because we know that in the brackets here, right? We know that in the brackets here, so 2x plus 2 and x plus 1, whatever numbers that is, right? We know that the number inside that bracket cannot be a negative number and it cannot be 0, right? It cannot be negative and it cannot be 0. Because we know that logarithms is not defined for the negative numbers, right? We can plug in a negative number into a, a logarithmic function. Good. So what can we now say? So I know that 2x plus 2, right? That value, whatever that value is, it must be greater than 0, right? It must be positive. Good. So what I can now say is that 2x is greater than a negative 2, right? And if I divide both sides of this inequality by the 2 here in front of the x, I will get x is greater than negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. Okay? So basically, what this is now saying here, what this is now saying is that I can only plug in values into the brackets here for x as long as it is greater than negative one, all right? If it is outside of that, then I'm going to get either zero or a, or a negative number, which is not going to be defined, all right? So let's look at it. We have x to be equal to negative a half, right? So we know that negative a half is indeed greater than negative one, right? That number is greater than negative one. So we can now say that x is equal to negative a half is indeed our solution, right? Because we know that when we substitute this value into the logarithm above, right? Into the logarithmic equation, it will satisfy, right? It will be satisfied. So the left-hand side will be equal to the right-hand side, in, in other words, okay? So I can now say that therefore, the solution is x equals negative a half, right? That is our solution to the, this logarithmic equation, all right? So x must be equal to negative a half, good. And that is our solution to this past paper question from the 2018 past paper, all right? Don't forget to like up the video and also comment down below, all right? And you can also share the video with your friends and remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.